It's a 7 0 run for Rice over the last two minutes plus. East Carolina hasn't scored in almost three minutes. Jason Metko alongside Siobhan Herndon. It's a 16 point lead for Rice, 37 21. Malia Fisher's had a game. She's perfect so far, Siobhan. Perfect Malia Fisher. This is what we tend to see from her. You know, she is the double double queen you know, for the Rice Owls. She's that constant threat. Had a couple games where she wasn't herself, but I love to see it. Entrenched in the huddle is Jessica Moore. Let's throw it to her to see a three from Morgan Mosley. Coach Edmonds telling her team that they need to push in transition and focus on offensive re rebounds. She mentioned that three times in a row, making sure that they do that as Klazak knocks down that shot there. She said, don't let up. We haven't played our best basketball yet this game. Guys. That's a scary proposition. <laughs> haven't played your best. Joiner hits a much needed two. Much needed too, because all the momentum was going Rice's way after Emily Klazak hit that little ver reversal layup. So you like to see that from ECU. The ball bouncing around like a pinball. Here's Ennis. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they are starting to separate themselves from ECU. You gotta love that Dominique Ennis is comfortable in knocking down that three. I say, here comes Rice. And another turnover at the timeline. Rice ball. Lindsay Edmonds more than fired up tonight. She's fired up indeed. She has to love the way her team is playing right now. She told them to pick it up, and that's what they're doing so far. It didn't take them long at all. They got the message loud and clear. 45% from the field, 33% from downtown. 9 to 10 from the line. Ennis again. My, 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 Dominique Ennis, I need to know what you have for dinner before this game. You are on and popping tonight. That's a baker's dozen for the Canadian. And the route is on at Tudor. McNeil lobbing one down for Joyner and scores another two. Joyner close enough to the basket where she can just kind of flick it in a little bit. What not a real shot, but she had a little nice basketball shot where it goes in for her. Adams lost the handle. ECU's in a big hole. Fade away from the free throw line. The friendly roll for Danae McNeil. And you know Danae McNeil is going to get it going. She is a bucket walking is what I like to call her. And that's a great way to kind of just ease the bleeding a little bit. Fisher the fade away, no dice. East Carolina pressing the issue here. They're down 15. Eurostep McNeil out of bounds. And I believe this will stay with the visitors. It will. When I didn't think Rice had another level to go to, they are tapping into another level right now. I didn't think it was possible, but after that timeout, after that break, Coach lit a fire under them, and now they're just playing extremely well, and the intensity intensity has picked up. Good play by McNeil going up, and Klazak draws the foul. Klazak second, and today McNeil trying to make some plays here. Right there, and it's kind of reaches in. Klazak was on her back. Both of them, you could have called a foul on Ennis, but the foul was called on Clay Zach, and now you send one of the best, you know, leaders and shooters in the conference to the line. Last year's American Defensive Player of the Year. 35 points, a career high versus SMU. 10th most in program history. And she is top 10 in steals and scores two critical free throws here to try to keep the Pirates in it. She does it all. She's, you know, as you mentioned, the defensive player of the year. She scores on the offensive end. She can do it on both sides of the basketball. And what I'm sure Coach McNeil needs from her right now is to maybe kind of take over this game. She maybe needs, she needs to have the ball in her hand at all times to kind of give her team a little lift. Jackson high off the glass, nothing but. And now Jackson trips up Morgan Mosley. Just a little bit too much defensive pressure right there by DJ. She did need to be overly aggressive. As you can see, Coach Edmonds goes to her bench and is able to come in with Daffy Owens right there. 
just not in position right there and comes in from the back. When you're not in front of a player, let your just ease away and let Dominic, as you can see, Dominique Ennis was saying, I had her, I had her. Because Ennis was in position. She didn't need to come in and bump her. DCU's had a 6-0 run for about a minute. Try to make it nine with Mosley. Not that time. Emily Klazak the rebound. Bit of a run here for the visiting Pirates. Rice trying to answer. Emily Klazak does just that. That's how you want to get yourself involved in this game. Emily Klazak was able to score her fourth point on that, but she she knows that she had she can be an offensive threat for this Rice Owls basketball team. And right there, she was able to take it coast to coast and score. Join her on high. Lobbing it down low, finding McNeil. Fade away. Oh, what a pretty shot. That's just McNeil using her size and her strength against a smaller Ennis. I would like to see Coach Edmonds maybe switch up who she has guarding McNeil because McNeil is going to get her points. Emily Klazak going to get her points. There's a trifecta. She, she's ready for this game. She's been waiting for that offensive like power where she comes out and has a good, good game, and she's just finding her shot and knocking it down. McNeil answers from the top of the key and hits a long two. Like I said, McNeil is coming out. She's going to put this team on her back and try to carry them towards a victory. But when a game is this far spread out, when you're looking at the score, it's going to take more than one person to get the job done. So hopefully her team can follow her lead. Fisher, the reverse lane, almost too easy. It's almost too easy. And when you have McNeil trying to score at one end of the court and then we come back, when Rice comes back and scores as well, that makes it tough because you can't trade bucket for bucket. You got to get stops and then score if you're ECU and you're trying to win this game. 90 ticks to go in the third. And in the middle of the key, we have a foul. Just a little bump by Haley Adams. She didn't mean it. She didn't mean no harm on that foul, but it's, it was just enough for the refs to call the uh, foul. Exactly 90 seconds to go in the third. Jason Metko, Siobhan Herndon, Jessica Mori, and all of you on this Valentine's night. Inbound to Joyner. Power move on Klazak, and it pays off. Like I said from the start of this second half, ECU has been able to use their size and their strength on the inside of the bucket. We saw them go away from it for a little bit, but looks like they're finding it back, and they're going back to that physicality, physicality down low. Too many steps. Haley Adams. Yeah, do notice right now, for Tucson and Susan Gulifak not on the floor here for us. Well, Coach told us earlier that she was going to try some different lineups within the game. She knows that ECU has size and strength, but she was saying that, hey, Rice has a little speed, and maybe we could tap into our speed and put some players out there where there's some mis mismatches throughout the game. She wanted to use that to her advantage. McNeil, another fadeaway for two. She's got that down. Klazak to Jazzy Owens Barnett. The ball's tipped away. Here comes McNeil. To the rack and finishes strong. I'm not sure how many points that is for McNeil within the last two minutes of that this quarter. But she is definitely willing her team to a win. Got she's a game trying, high 18 now. She's trying to get them to feed off of her intensity and stick, like kind of follow her lead. She can't win this game by herself. Jazzy Owens Barnett. Got a three second differential between game and shot clock. Absolute rejection, my, my joiner. That's just, that's just pure athleticism. Do you hear me when she comes over from the opposite block and able to skywalk in the air? Look, she's on the other side and then she comes over and just sizes her up and knocks that ball out of bounds. That's some serious range. That's some athleticism. Seven to shoot for Rice. Into Klazak from the corner. It's another one. That's what you want to see to end that run by ECU. ECU's McNeil has been putting this team on her back. And Klazak able to hit that three going into the fourth quarter. That gives your team some momentum and, most importantly, some energy. My My Joyner tries a half-court shot. That doesn't go down. Rice's lead is 13 as we go to the final 10. Don't you go anywhere on ESPN.